What's up guys, we are back with another Marvel Legends review, and I don't know, this has to be, it's gotta be, right? The most anticipated 2019 Marvel Legends reveal, just based on character assortment, and then of course the main character. Not to mention the fact that everything X-Men is just crazy and popular right now in Marvel Legends, so we are of course taking a look at the Jean Grey, Wolverine, Cyclops, the Love Triangle 3-pack. So we're finally getting a new Jean Grey, and then we are getting yet another Wolverine and yet another Cyclops, but they all come with new stuff, and obviously this is a must-have set. It's got three main X-Men and one we've been dying for a new one for for a number of years now, but of course this thing also comes in just the best Marvel Legends packaging. It's just like the stuff that Havoc and Polaris came in, so you've got the blue X logo uh, kind of backer artwork here. You've got the X-Men logo, 80 years of course, and then you've got comic card artwork on the side down here that gives you all three of the of the characters, and then the back gives you perfect recreations of that card artwork, the front side and the back side. It just ticks off all those nostalgia boxes for me. So very much love the packaging, but of course we have to do it. So let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, we have got our quote-unquote love triangle three-pack. So of course we've got our Cyclops, our Wolverine, and let's let's face it, the, the star of the show here is finally we have our Jean Grey figure, which arguably rounds out what most folks really need for full X-Men rosters. There's not a great deal more that you truly need. There's a lot more that I really want. But we have a lot that we've been clamoring for for a really long time now. Hasbro has really churned out an enormous amount of X-Men characters in a relatively short period of time. And I, honestly, I think they knew what they were doing with this one because they waited and waited and waited. We've got a bunch of Cyclops. We have a ton of Wolverine figures now, but they knew, they just knew if, if they packed Jean Grey in with another one of each of them that we would happily buy them up. And I can happily say that Jean Grey is a solid figure, but I am not in any way upset having another Cyclops or a Wolverine. They, they are very similar, but very different at the same time to uh, their more mainline counterparts. So we're going to take a look at each one of these individually. I'm not going to go crazy in depth on Cyclops or Wolverine because these are repaints. That's really all it comes down to. These are repaints. We're just going to talk mostly about what's changed, what's different, and compare them to their original counterparts that came out in normal waves. So let's get started and take a look at Slim first. So here is our new Cyclops figure with the mainline release. And these are the ones that make the most sense to do a comparison to because they are obviously kind of two sides of the same coin, really. So you've got our bright blue kind of orangey tone pouches and strap version of Cyclops. And then you've got our new figure that is a darker blue with a very, very bright yellow color scheme in terms of the boots, the gloves, the straps, and just the pouches. And then, of course, the visor as well. They are the same figure, though. So it's the same Bucky cap pieces, the torso, and the legs and the boots, stuff like that. Of course, the big difference, though, is that it's this is another version of 90 Cyclops with the jacket. So he's got the jacket arms that we've seen uh, recently, and you've got an X logo on those, and then you've got the actual jacket piece, like what you would see on Old Man Logan. It's exactly the same figure. It just has a little bit of something different to set him apart from a figure rather than doing just a straight re-release. And I think he looks pretty good. I'm happy with the way they put him together. Those arms work pretty well. The jacket works fine. My only real gripe when it comes to this figure, and it's it's not this particular one, it's this one as well. It's these stupid straps on the legs. I hate them so much because they just want to fall down if you look at it wrong or just breathe on them heavily. They just want to slide right off, so my recommendation would be to glue those guys down. Uh, I have done that on this figure, and I need to do it on this one. Uh, it's just a big pet peeve of mine. Otherwise, though, if you did not get this Cyclops, and this is the perfect time to get one, because they're really similar. Of course, they're not exactly the same, but they're close, and they occupy the same space in terms of timeline, 90s X-Men roster kind of stuff. And it's a solid figure. It just happens to be a little bit tweaked to change him up enough. And then, of course, he does come with some accessories that we never got with the original Cyclops, or, well, any of the other ones. So this one does come with a handful of accessories. It's nothing too crazy, but it's, a, it's enough to really change him up quite a bit and give him some more very quintessential 90s kind of looks. So to start with, you do get an extra hand because this Cyclops, unlike the others, he comes with two fists out of the package and a swappable 
hand for the uh, optic blast kind of touching the visor kind of pose. So I like the fact that he doesn't have to always be in this pose. It's kind of one of my pet peeves with that original figure is he always has this hand. So you've got this guy and then you've got a couple of extra heads. So you've got one here with uh, the kind of the big shades on him. So this is a very 90s style look, I think. Very, very good head sculpt. I'm really happy with this one. I'm pretty happy to get a non-visored Cyclops uh, head sculpt to begin with. I assume this is a new one. I'm, I'm not familiar with it, so someone let me know if it's not. But my favorite of the bunch is this one right here with the actual sunglasses, the red shades. This looks very much like something that I would expect to see like on those, uh, this the 90s style beach scenes that that were pretty prevalent in the 90s where he's uh you know with Jean Grey like holding on to a surfboard or something like that and he's uh, he's got these sunglasses he looks kind of smarmy and kind of cocky which is a very very cyclops thing so i'm really happy to see this one i'm sure that this is probably going to be used down the road for someone else i'm getting a very matt murdock kind of vibe out of this thing so i'm sure there's reuse plan for this guy uh, assuming that it hasn't already been reused i'm not sure it doesn't look look too familiar to me but i'm pretty happy with it i'm really excited to be able to play around with some cyclops figures that utilize something that doesn't necessarily always have to have a visor on it and now for Wolverine, this is, again, kind of more of the same. Same situation that Cyclops has. So you've got, to start with, you've got a palette swap going on. The body here is 100% the same, so there's no difference in the body construction, except for one little thing, which we'll get to. But the, the big thing right off the bat is colors, paints. So to start with, you've got a much brighter yellow this time around versus another more orangish hue, just like Cyclops had an orange hue. This one is more yellow. The blue is a little more navy blue and not metallic like this one is. And then the red on the belt is a little bit brighter. He also has a little wash in his arms to bring out the muscle striations a little bit better. So his arms kind of have a little gray tinge to him, whereas this one is just the straight plastic. Now he does have uh, different hands this time around as well. They are the same base hands, but they are, but they're retooled is the easiest way to describe them because this guy has, uh, he's got new claws. So he's got a set of bone claws here, which I think look pretty good. They very much give the idea of them looking like bone with due to their texture and just the color. And then, like I said, they are retooled hands. So instead of having pieces that will sit into the, uh, the actual like grommets there, whatever you would want to call those. It's like when you can pop the, the claws out of a standard Wolverine hand. These do not seem to pop out. The metal pieces are actually seated into kind of grooves in the top of the hand versus being part of the sculpt and then having the claws plugged into them. So I would not try to pull those out. I don't think they're going to come out. Uh, if, if anything, you're going to pull this whole metal assembly out as well. So you've got those. It's a little bit different, but kind of the same situation. It just kind of attaches in a different fashion. And then, of course, you've got the big thing. You've got a newer head sculpt on this guy and this is really as best I can tell this is just the 12 inch legends Wolverine head scaled down so you've got uh, a bit of a battle damage thing going on here you've got the holes and the cuts that are in all of the uh, the fins that run across the head you've got the battle damage on the top so his hair sticking out and then he's screaming he's yelling he's Wolverine he's not a happy dude right now based on this particular head sculpt I kind of like it it's it's different enough it's kind of a general Wolverine thing where he's always going to be yelling about something but it's different from this one, certainly, and you also get another one of these as well. So you've got a little bit of a change up in terms of expression, but then you've also got all the battle damage, which really kind of sets him apart on his own. Without that, I think he'd be almost too similar to this one because the yellow is, it's yellower, but they're still both pretty yellow figures. Otherwise, though, I mean, I think he looks, he looks pretty solid. And then, of course, I like the, the added wash that's on the arms to bring out what would be arm hair there, I suppose, is what they're going for. So it's a pretty solid Wolverine. I mean, if you like bone claws, you're in for a treat here because we've not gotten those yet, and it's kind of been a an odd omission so far. I know some folks have been asking for them, and uh, I'm happy to have them. And I think getting a battle damage Wolverine with bone claws, it kind of sets the stage for a particular type of battle scene, you know, throw him up against Magneto or something like that. But then he also does come with a pretty solid array of accessories as well that are different from the normal Wolverine stuff. So accessories is one area where I would say that this figure is definitely a little different compared to Cyclops and, well, especially the Jean Grey figure in this pack because he comes with a bunch of stuff and you can actually make this into your standard Wolverine if somehow you never got that original one uh, from, what, the Apocalypse Wave. So if you don't have that one, you could make yourself just a brighter version of that because he does come with uh, that standard head sculpt with, again, just a more yellow 
color scheme on it. So you've got that to replace them with. And then you've also got a set of extra hands, which are the standard claw type hands. So you, these are the classic claws, not the ones that come on the X-Force Wolverine. I kind of wish that they had swapped those out because those are, those are definitely superior claws out of the package. But you've got these, so you can pop the hands up and put those on. And then you'd have, for all intents and purposes, a regular Wolverine figure. But they also gave you the removable mask. So this is the thing where you pop off the head and put this on his neck. And then you've got this really kind of creepy looking, trying to be sexy kind of Wolverine unmasked head sculpt. I'm not a big fan of this one. Uh, honestly, I'm not a big fan of many of the unmasked Wolverine heads. I think they never quite get it just right. And this one definitely misses the mark for me as well. It just something about it seems a little stalkerish almost, especially in the context of this love triangle pack. And I'm pretty sure this is another 12 inch head that's been scaled down. But if you want it, you've got another head sculpt, another unmasked Wolverine head. So he does have quite a spread. You've got three total heads here and you've got an extra set of hands and then you've got the, the cowl that you can drape down his back. So pretty solid spread for Wolverine here. And last but certainly not least, we've got Jean Grey. So this is something that, of course, a lot of folks have really been looking forward to. There has been no easy or cheap way to get a Jean Grey figure in this era uh, for quite a while. And even the most recent one in the Return of Marvel Legends era is an awful figure by all accounts. So we've got a better version right here for retail price now. So let's take a look, see what she can do. I don't think we're going to be too surprised in how she moves because she's still a standard female Marvel Legends figure. So you've got a head that sits on a ball hinge. She can't really go up too far, but she can go down uh, side to side. Her hair is quite big. It doesn't really cause too much of an issue. I've not had any stability issues because of it, but it is, of course, a big chunk of plastic, so it does throw some weight uh, on the back side of her. Her arms go out about that far. They rotate around the shoulder. She does have pads up here, so they're going to get in the way a little bit. You've got rotating single-jointed elbows, and then you've got wrist rotation and hinge. She does have the little pads that sit over top of her wrist, so they're going to hinder her a little bit there. And then you've got your diaphragm cut, so she can go side to side, backwards, forwards pretty well, full rotation as well. Legs go out about that far. They kick forward way more than they probably should, and they kick back a little bit. You've got your thigh cut up there. You've got your double jointed knees, of course, and then you've got rocker, and you've got your hinges down at those ankles. So again, pretty standard stuff, normal Marvel Legends female type of articulation, build, that whole deal. But she moves well enough. Of course, the big thing with this figure is how she looks and just the general idea of getting this version of Jean Grey across. And I think for the most part, they actually nailed it really nicely. She does have a little bit of paint QC issues going on that I've seen on various figures in varying degrees. So I've seen folks with issues with the belt buckle being either off center or just painted funny. I've got really fuzzy lines along the chest here. I've got a little nick on... Uh, her torso right there on her on her breast area. And just, this is something that I saw with like the Havoc and Polaris pack recently as well. And I have to assume that they're, you know, probably in the same design stages because they came out back to back. They both had really fuzzy lines where the paint transitioned from molded plastic to paint. And I'm seeing the exact same thing here, especially on her torso. Her midriff is fine. Uh, so is her butt. So is the crotch area. It's it's fine. It's it's this area up here where the blue and the uh, the yellow is is meeting. It just seems to be kind of haphazardly applied. Otherwise, though, like the the paint on the arms for the little band there is really good. The paint on these whatever these things are supposed to be pouches. It's kind of a goldy yellow met uh, metallic. It's painted really cleanly, no bleeding or anything like that. So she does look pretty good. I mean, I just have a little bit of paint QC problems going on. A little bit. I've seen better and I've seen worse, so your mileage may vary. If you're in a store and you find her, I would suggest checking to see if, you, if they have multiples. Try to find the best one. But I do think she looks pretty good at a base level. I think the body's appropriately sized. Right parts usage. I like the, the, the wrist guards on the figure. It's all very 90s accurate, and, and that's what really gets me the most. But of course, the big thing for this figure is it's got to be the head sculpt, because it's all about the likeness when it comes to this one. And I think I think they've done a pretty good job here. And I say pretty good because I don't think it's perfect, but it's it's very much a Jean Grey head sculpt here. And I think that they've done a really nice job with paints. In comparison to the chest, 
as especially with this figure in comparison to the chest, the face is really good because the head is actually molded blue plastic. And the face, the entire face is painted. The skin, the eyebrows, the eyes, the lips. My only true gripe that I think I have with this particular figure is that her eyes are all are on everything that I think I've seen so far. They're all slightly looking a little bit up. The pupils are towards the top of the eye. They're not really centered, uh, which is kind of throwing me off. But when you get her in the right kind of pose, it kind of fades away. So it maybe it was done in intentionally. Maybe it's just a happy accident or something like that, but it hasn't really been detrimental. And if you get her posed in the right way, it makes zero difference. But otherwise, I think the face is, is pretty spot on. That eye thing is maybe more of a gripe or a personal kind of pet peeve thing going on. But I do think she looks very much like Jean Grey. There's really, there's really no disputing that. That's a quintessential 90s looking Jean Grey. The head of hair on this thing is, again, truly massive. There's a lot going on here. There is some shading, so it's kind of a very dark red with some darker shading in there. And I think it works really nicely. Again, it doesn't throw her off too bad. I think she holds her head up really nicely despite all that added weight. And yeah, it looks like her. What, what more can you really ask for? Well, you could ask for another head sculpt, I suppose, and we do get that. We get something that I know a lot of folks were after, the very 90s, uh, very animated series kind of thing, the head sculpt of the ponytail, and I think the ponytail is really nicely done. It's long. It's not nearly as heavy as the main head of hair on the other head sculpt, but it looks really nice. Same kind of color scheme with the wash in there as well to bring out the sculpt. And this is another situation where you get a fully painted face on... Uh, on this head, and I think they did a pretty good job. It's a, it's a slightly different look. It's definitely not the same type of thing, just with a different hairstyle. So you can tell some some small differences between sculpts, but I do think this one's really nicely done. And again, it's another instance where they fully painted the face, and it came out exceptionally good uh, compared to some of the weird flubs on the body. Otherwise, though. I mean, I think she looks really nice. My one gripe in this particular instance, though, is that this is an accessory, and this is the only accessory she gets. She doesn't get any extra hands. And one thing that I really wanted to see for her would have been some energy effects, something to give off the idea of her telekinetic powers. And we don't get anything like that. Obviously, this is a situation where we got two brand new head sculpts, so I'm not too upset by any means. But uh, she is kind of bare bones, especially compared to her counterparts in this set. So, overall, this is a must-have set. I mean, I could probably just end it right there, but I can't understate just how well done a lot of the stuff here is. Even though I've already got essentially this Wolverine and essentially this Cyclops already, there is enough different stuff here to make these two stand out and to make them just be interesting figures on their own. We're not really going into new territory with either of them, but who doesn't like more Wolverines and Cyclops? I'm certainly not upset that these two were figures were included in this package. Granted, we're all really buying this for Jean Grey, but I do think that they did a solid job with the pack as a whole. But Jean Grey is definitely the star of the show, and we've been wanting this one for a while. It's undeniable, and I think they did a pretty solid job on this figure. She should have come with a little bit more in the way of accessories, I think, but the base figure is nice, and it definitely looks like what I think of when I think of a 90s Jean Grey, so that's really all I can ask for. I'm really excited to have have this stuff. I'm really glad that they're giving us this 90s era X-Men stuff, and I think they did a great job with this particular set, with these three figures, and I can't understate how much I love the packaging that they've done with this stuff. It's it's ticking off a lot of those nostalgia boxes, and it's really doing it for me on a personal level. So that's going to do it for this look at the Marvel Legends Jean Grey Wolverine Cyclops 3-pack. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.